Hello again, everybody, and welcome to college football on this Sunday evening in Cable Channel 20. The Westmore Eagles just coming onto the field. We're moments away from the kickoff and the 30th annual meeting between Northwestern and Westmore. Of course, uh, I think it's been well documented. The Red Raiders have won the last 17 in this series, so it's been a long losing drought by Westmore. But for the first time in probably almost two decades, Westmore probably comes in as the slight favorite here today, although... Northwestern hasn't lost here at David Oy Field since 1980. A 35-game home field winning streak going, so a lot of streaks could be broken today if at long last Westmar finally finds out a way, figures out a way to beat the Red Raider football program. It's a program, of course, here in Northwestern that has been emulated by a lot of ball clubs around the area and around the three-state uh, proximity of Northwestern College, people that are on the Red Raider schedule year after year, and I think to some extent Westmar has tried to develop their program along the lines that Northwestern has built their powerhouse here in Orange City. Certainly you can't uh, beat success because uh, Westmar has gone to the Northwestern program and pulled down just virtually all of their assistant coaching staff from this program. So it's become almost like a bit of a homecoming of sorts for the Westmar team when they come back up here, almost like a big family reunion to get the old coaches from uh, Northwestern, seeing some of their ex-players and ex-assistants here that are on the Westmar side now. Brad Henrich, for instance, was uh, in a Red Raider uniform playing against Westmar. Spoke to him just briefly before the game, and he said, boy, it feels strange to be on this side looking across at the Raider Red. But uh, he hopes maybe his streak here at David Oy Field continues. He's never lost a ball game here as a player, uh, dating back to his uh, beginning of his career in the early 80s, and he hopes that that streak anyway continues and now as a coach for the Westmar College Eagles. They are, of course, out there at midfield with a flip of the coin. As you can see, Westmar has won the toss and will be receiving the opening kickoff. The Eagles will be heading into a little bit of a breeze out of the south. It's a beautifully gorgeous, sunny afternoon here at Davaloy Field in Orange City. And uh, certainly you couldn't ask for a better mid-October day than we've got here. The wind's got a little chilling effect, but uh, it's going to be great for the fans and the ball players today as we've got a nice crowd gathering, not capacity as we normally have for Westmar Northwestern football, but... Nice crowd, especially up from the Mars, as I think they finally anticipate the Eagles being competitive against the Red Raiders. Raiders, of course, won only 6 to nothing a year ago in a game that featured virtually uh, little or no offense on a muddy track. The two quarterbacks, Kelly McClinic and Craig Lynch, had off days. Both are back to redeem themselves here this afternoon, although the rumor has it that Lynch will not be starting for Northwestern. They're off to a 2-3 and three start. They're ready to shake things up, and... The word is that Kirk Mostum, a freshman All-Stater out of Linville Sully High School, is going to make his first collegiate start here today. He's a good throwing quarterback, led Linville Sully to the 1A state championship last fall as a high schooler. And uh, we'll see, I guess, when the Red Raiders move over to the offensive side of the football. Westmar, of course, coming off a week break. They uh, have a 3-2 and two record as the day starts. Two weeks ago, romped to a 71 to nothing school record-setting homecoming victory against the Concordia Comets. How much momentum will carry over from the win two weeks ago remains to be seen. But uh, certainly, there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of intensity always goes along with this series. It has been a great rivalry through the years. Eagles have people probably about as healthy as they've had since the season opening kickoff back in September. The coaches tell me, although they're hardly at 100% all up and down the line of scrimmage, but people are closer to uh, top health than they've been in weeks. Dwayne Hobart, the only regular that saw a lot of duty through the first five games and will not be in uniform today at arthroscopic surgery following the Concordia game for the knee injury and he will not be in uniform. Now well, Brummer's got her teed up. We're just about set to renew the rivalry as Westmar heads north-south on the field and the kickoff right down the middle, end over end, going to be taken by Skolton at the 9, back to the 15, 20, hit at about the 22 and taken down. Good open field tackle there in the specialty unit for the uh, Red Raiders by Dave Roseboom. And Skolton a little slow getting up. He's kind of stretching things out. Uh, Roseboom came down, put a good stick right about the kneecaps, and just dropped him in his tracks. Might have bent one of the knees back a little bit. And Skolton a little slow getting up. Boy, this would be a loss to the Eagles right away because, of course, Skolton has been the top pass catcher on the ball club, hauling in 10 passes and has been one of the favorite targets long, averaging almost 25 yards per catch. So right away, an injury timeout. I think Todd will be back. He's on his feet and walking off. Just got stung a little bit. Dave Hector and Kelly uh, soak up out there to take a look. And Todd is walking off under his own ability. I think he'll be back. Westmore makes really no deep offensive changes. Rob White and Tim Shipley at the ends. Todd Skolton was scheduled to start at the wideout. Now it apparently will be uh, 
Well, they're coming out in the wishbone anyway, so they won't need an extra wide out. They've got uh, Vernon Bolden up there in the up back, his first collegiate start. Charles Hill and Calvin Pierce, the deuce backs behind Bolden, and of course, uh, Kelly McClinic at quarterback. There's a get of Bolden right away. Flag going to go down, and the Red Raiders swarm him under. Well, if your color set is set right, you've got the Raiders in the bright red, kind of the gray colored pants, the white helmets, and Westmore in the traveling white with the silver pants, silver headgear, blue numbers, and holding against the Eagles, and they're going to be backed up to the wall right away. Offensively for Westmore in the interior line, you've got Jeff Wolheisen, Byron Bowling at the tackles, Tim Pauley and John Barton at the guards, and Wayne Spearing starts at center. Of course, Craig Larson was uh, out for the Concordia game. He's healthy enough to play again, but can't seem to root Wayne Spearing out of there at the offensive center spot now. One other offensive note for this uh, Westmore team, uh, of course, uh, Charles Hill now some uh, 300 and 93 yards shy of setting a single season school rushing record of 1130 yards set in 1971 by Randy Beving. So Charles in five games barring injury should surpass that easily. That's going to bring up a first down and 15 now for Westmar. Only got five yards on that penalty. Fumbled off the center snap. There's a give to Charles Hill. Charles breaks the tackle to the 20, 25 out over the 30. Drops the football to the ground. Forced the fumble and we've got a face mask I believe on top of it. Kevin Pulse comes up and grabs a hold of Hill's face mask and this is going to be Zamore tacked on to it. Hill almost rambled for a first down there. He looks to be about a yard short. Gain of about 14 on the carry. Hill broke a tackle about two yards past the line of scrimmage and then got to that outside. He is a slashing type runner. So this will give the Eagles the first down as they walk off the additional yardage at the end of the play. First and 10 as they move the ball out to the Eagle 37 yard line. At 14.25 left to play in the opening quarter. Just a good start to things here this afternoon. No score. A little bit of a breeze. Maybe hear it in our crowd mics. First down, Westmar. Kelly McClinic looking over that Raider defense. Boy, they have had a lot of trouble stopping the rushing game with their defense. They have been on the field way too much this year, too. There's Bolden up the middle. Whoa, what a head-to-head -head smack there is there at about the 45-yard line. And Bolden going to go for about eight yards right up the pike. <laughs> Tackle going to be made for the Red Raiders by number uh, 30, Brent DeHaan. Red Raiders have done a little adjusting defensively, just trying to find some combination to... Help them out defensively. Last week, Riddle for 59 points by St. Ambrose in a 59-14 setback over at Davenport. Red Raiders have won two games here at home this year, both times coming from behind to do it. There's Bolden up the middle again, and Bolden going to be hit at about the 47. Should be enough for another first down, though. Again, DeHaan up to make the hit. And Clint Lovell there, freshman out of Bronson. They've got uh, three freshmen starting defensively today for the Red Raiders. Going to measure. They're close enough to bring the sticks across the field with 13.20 to go, no score. And they're about a half a foot short as they stretch the chains out. Westmar's up there on third and about six inches to go. Wayne spurring up over the football, getting the sticks set on the sideline, and now we're set to go. West, Westmore out on a wishbone, and Kelly McClinic going to take a timeout now as he checks over the Raider defense. Well, Westmore's got things readjusted. Kelly McClinic steps up over center. Big call here early, third down and inches, and Kelly McClinic didn't want to mess it up. Quarterback sneak, McClinic for the first down. He's up near midfield, and Westmore already with a nice drive beginning to develop downfield. They're out to near midfield after starting back at about their own 22-yard line. Brings up a first and ten. I think the second first down on this drive of the Eagles. This will be their sixth play coming up. Now, this, of course, important to get those long, sustained drives, keep that Red Raider offense off the field because they have been the weapon that has hurt Westmar so many years. The Eagles trying to snap a 17-game losing streak to this ball club in the series. Here's a give to Kelvin Pierce. Pierce going to knife in behind a block by Bolden. Over left tackle for about a yard or two. Carries to about the 49. Clemens up there to make the hit. Clemens, of course, was doubtful until late in the week. He injured a leg against Hastings two weeks ago here. And the junior out of Sioux Center, of course, uh, one of the top linebackers 
in District 15, so they need him in there. He missed the St. Ambrose ball game a week ago and was doubtful for much of this week for this one. 12-17 left to go in the first quarter. No score with Westmore on the move. Second down at eight. Ball just over the 50-yard line. Out of the wishbone. Hill and Kelvin Pierce set up behind. Vernon Bolden. Option play. Pitch out. Juggled by Charles Hill. Now to the 45 and out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Well, that was almost disaster. They flirted with disaster in the backfield as the pitch was uh, off the shoulder pads of Hill. He juggled but held on, and he ends up turning it into a gain of about eight yards, and it looks like enough for the first down to the 41-yard line. And the Eagles continue the march, their third first down on this drive. And again, it started back at the 22-23 yard line. However, the five-yard penalty actually pushed him back on first down inside the 20. And they now moved it down to the Red Raider 41-yard line. Size-wise, the Raiders still have those big people that just not getting the job done this year for them up front. Particularly offensive line is where they have had some troubles this year. That's so uncustomary for this ball club. There's Hill up the middle. Hill going to be hit at about the 36, dives to about the 34-yard line. That'll be good for another seven yards. And boy, they're ripping up about five, six, seven yards per carry right now. Hill, of course, started the game with 738 yards for the year and 132 carries, five and a half yards every time he touches the football. And for the games, he's averaging about 147.6 per ball game, and that is second in the nation behind a Marshall kid out of uh, Dana College. So I guess we saw enough of on homecoming afternoon or excuse me, on uh, the uh, home date with Dana about three weeks ago. Second down at about four to go. Bolden in motion to the left, quick pitch, Charles Hill that way. 35, 30, first down, flag down, down to about the 25 yard line. Hill gonna ramble for about nine yards. Let's see what the penalty's about. Probably a blocking violation if it's out there. And holding going to be the call against the Westmar Eagles. To wipe out the first down and, of course, uh, put the Eagles in a bit of a hole on second down. They will get the down over it again. Through the flag at about the 30, so it's only going to put them back close to the original line of scrimmage at about the 40-yard line. Actually, they're looking at second at about nine now. 11.09 left to go first quarter. No score. Don't forget Eagle League backers football comes your way uh, on Monday during the noon hour of the Westmore College Commons. You're certainly welcome to come down and enjoy coaches' comments and uh, also watch films of the Saturday afternoon ball games. Next week, we'll be home hosting the Peru State Bobcats. Second down and nine out of the wishbone. Split receiver to the left side. That's uh, Rob White back to pass. Go, Skolton it is. Skolton makes the catch and drops it. Oh, he was gone. Skolton went down to the left side. Nobody went with him, and he was wide open, and he just flat out dropped the football. Kelly laid it right in there into the wind, and Skolton dropped it. Boy, for some reason, the Raiders secondary just froze on the play action into the line, and Skolton ran right on by him. Come to Rob White into the ball game. Third down and nine now. A few sighs of relief here on the Red Raiders side, and Eagle fans, of course, collectively with a bit of a concerned sigh there because that was six that got away. Points have been so hard to come by in this series. Option play left side. Pitch out. Charles Hill moves up inside of the 35 down at about the 32 yard line. Brent DeHaan up there to make the hit on him. Kelvin Pierce just didn't get DeHaan knocked down otherwise Hill would have been up the seam then and probably would have got him a first down. Looking at fourth down at about two at this point. Kind of a no man's land out of field goal range, certainly with the wind gusting into the Eagle face. About a 15 mile an hour wind, 10 to 15 I'd say this afternoon. And they're going for it. Eagles trying to make things click here, keeping this drive alive. This is gonna be their 12th play, 11th play coming up on this drive. There's the give, Hill got a first down, 30. Down at about the 28-yard line. A little cross-buck action to the backfield and a nice hole over there on the left side, and Hill knifes through there for the first down. And the Eagles just made a big fourth down conversion to keep the drive going. They've had the ball now for five minutes off the opening kickoff. 10.02 to go in the first quarter. No score. Boy, this is picturesque driving offensively, but, of course, the only thing that would be the perfect finish would be the points at the end of it. 
And they haven't done that yet. This drive again started way back around their own 20-yard line. Rob White split wide to the left side. Shipley tight end to the right out of the wishbone set. Bolden getting his first collegiate start today. Kind of a surprise. Bolden up the middle. Vernon got a carry inside the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Swarm of red to take him down. Brent DeHaan there and Clemens. And also Dave Bronner. Bronner, a junior out of Cresco. A lot of these uh, ball players, of course, are good friends with each other off the field. And a lot of them were teammates, I guess. And a lot of them were recruited by the same two schools. Second down at about six to go. Kelly McClinic looking over that Northwestern defense. Going to give them a lot of offensive looks today, we understand. There's Charles Hill, smacks headgear to headgear with Clemens and goes down at about the 21-yard line. And he'll carry for only about a yard on the play. Third down at about three coming up now for the Westmark College Eagles. 8.42 to go in this opening drive of the ball game in the first quarter. And Westmark chewing up some big time on it. They're going to use up over half of the first quarter by the time they either finish it off with score or uh, relinquish it on downs. They are inching into Mike Morey field goal range now, but again, it's going to be tough into the wind. Rob White going to split wide to the left, tight end right. Out of the wishbone, McClinic going to give straight ahead of Bolden. Bolden going to plow to about the 18-yard line. It won't be enough for the first down yet, but they're looking at fourth down and probably a little less than a yard to go over the first down yardage. We'll see where they mark it. Boy, they gave him a good spot, though. Maybe he's closer to a first down already than we thought he would be. It's going to be inches short of a first down if they didn't get it. Red Raiders shoring up the middle. Brian Vanderswag into the ball game. And they're going to bring the chains out. Boy, where they place the football, it's favorable enough. It could maybe buy the point of it. Get them a first down. Now the football, the Eagles got them a first down on that drive. That's their fifth first down on this drive. It's now 13 plays old and about uh, seven minutes along. By the time they snap the football, as we're coming up on the eight-minute mark, this still off the opening kickoff. The clinic, the master in the huddle, the little general, bringing his white shirts up to the line of scrimmage, right hash mark. Going to go Rob White, split to the right side, right along that northwestern sideline. Bowling in motion, left quick pitch, Charles Hill to the left. Tries to get outside, and, oh, he breaks the tackle. And the red shirts swarm him under. He managed to get back to the line of scrimmage. Clint Lovell from that outside linebacker spot, fought off a block, got in there, had him in the backfield. He got away from that and avoided the loss, turned it into maybe about a half-yard gain. Got back to about the 18-yard line. Second down and 10 to go now. Kind of a wasted down. 7.26 to play in the opening quarter. Still no score, but the Eagles are marching. Still off the opening kickoff. Well, it's a masterful drive. It's going to be in the 15-16 play category by the time it either comes up short or finds the golden land. Bolden in motion to the left side again. Straight ahead he goes to Kelvin Pierce. Pierce going to knife inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. And now the Eagles are going to be looking at a third down, and it looks like about five yet for the first down. They're at about the 12, and they got to get to about the 70-yard line. Rob White in, and they're going to send Shipley out of there. So apparently they're going to go with uh, two wideouts this time. Going to go with two wideouts, no tight end this time. And still the wishbone set. Skolton going to go wide right. And White is uh, right, wide to the left. Option play, pitch out. There's Charles Hill to the 10. Dives to about the 6 or 7, and this is going to be close to a first down. Charles is signaling first down yardage, but uh, he doesn't count. <laughs> and they may have to bring the chains across again, and they will to measure yet again on this drive. Charles was right. It is first and goal at about the 70-yard line, of the Eagles continue this march. Now it's first down number six on the drive as the Eagles uh, now looking at their 18th play of this drive. 6.06 6 left to go in the first quarter and still Northwestern hasn't touched the football yet. Wayne spurring up over the football. Kelly McClinic taking a look at that Red Raider defense lining up basically in their 4-3 pro set. They've played that for years up here. Straight ahead of Vernon Bolin. Bolin going to blast to about the five-yard line. Good for another two. Second and goal from the five-yard line. It's where the yardage usually is given up grudgingly at this point. 
because it's tough to pass. Your secondary coverage area is certainly condensed. Eagles, I don't believe, have thrown a pass in this entire drive. It's been all on the ground. Well, they did throw the one, I guess, uh, that uh, they had the touchdown on and dropped. So uh, how can we forget that one? Otherwise, this drive had ended a long time ago with six on the board already. Rob White going to split wide left. Shipley back in at tight end. There's the option. Kelly McClinic going to keep it. Dives. Touchdown. How do you like that to open the ball game? Some uh, 87 yards on the drive. 19 plays. McClinic finishes off with a five-yard keeper, his third touchdown of the season. McClinic had a couple of them two weeks ago in a homecoming ball game. And Kelly's on the option. Got bumped a little bit coming off center, but after he broke free from that uh, little contact, there was a good hole back up inside. He cut inside and got it. The extra point try by Morey. Out of Holmberg's hold is good, and Westmar leads it 7-0 with 5.08 to go. First quarter, 10-minute drive. Tim McPartland going to kick it off. It's going to go end over end. The wind's going to hold it up a little bit, so it'll be short. Going to be taking it about the 19, 20, 25. Whoa, big hole up the middle of the 30, 35. Hit hard at about the 39-yard line. That's the end of the line right there. McLeod going to take down Huss. Kirby Huss, a standout freshman out of Battle Creek, returning the kickoff for the Red Raiders. And here they come offensively. And yes, it is Kirk Mosden, the freshman quarterback, making his initial collegiate start here this afternoon out of Linville Sully High School, taking over for Craig Lynch, who started last year and has been the starter up till now for the Red Raider football team. They're going to try and shake things up a little bit off to the 2-3 and three start. Going to send Mullenberg in motion to the left. Roll out to the right, run pass option, and it's going to be Mosdem running the football. Freddie Anderson going to be up there to make the tattoo on him. Anderson, a late addition to the Eagles starting lineup, in there for Robert Johnson. Johnson bumped out of the lineup because of a little bit of a JR slump right now, they tell me. So Freddie just gives him a little bit of an element of speed, and they're going to let him come in there and see what he can do. Picked up about four on the play. Boy, there was a heck of a hit there. Second down at about six to go. Tell you, Todd Skolton probably feels best about Kelly McClinic's touchdown. He was the one that dropped the touchdown pass a little way to go, and they salvaged things after all. There's Mosdem going down on the quarterback keeper, Kurt Westoff and uh, Mike Rogers, as well as Chad Shook in there to converge as a trio on that Northwestern quarterback. Checking in is Tim Oberson for the Red Raiders and Mark Kuyper out of those two will be trading off all day long bringing plays in. Oberson from nearby Hospers. In fact, we can see Hospers from high atop our press box booth there. We're outdoors working today. So we've got the little bit of the element of the wind to work with. Lynch, or Mostum going to be back to pass. No way is he going to get a chance to look downfield. Westoff and Mike Buck Rogers were there to make the hit on him. And the Eagles have swarmed them back at the 38-yard line. Boy, that touchdown lit a fire into this football team in that 10-minute, 19-play drive that opened the ball game. And the Red Raiders went 1-2-3, and it's punt time. Fourth down at 11 to go. Ball back to the Red Raider 39. They'll have the wind to their back. Joe Holmberg and Paul Safford back there to take the punt. These two are about due to break something big. These two have got a lot of punt return talent, but they really haven't had a big return yet this year. And there's the punt by Chris Fisher over the head of Holmberg and Safford. Going to take a lateral roll, and the Eagles are going to be fighting out of a big hole here back at the five-yard line. Going to be downed. Way back downfield by Dave Dow out of nearby Sutherland. That ball on the six-yard line of the Eagles going to open up their second series of the ball game from about 94 yards away from pay dirt. Well, they went 87 yards on their first drive. There's a give to Bolden, and Bolden going to go down at about the seven-yard line, seven or eight, only a yard or two in there for him. Well, Westmar did a good job of really mixing the plays up on that first drive. Only threw one pass, and that, of course, was... Uh, the aborted uh, potential touchdown thing that uh, was dropped. And uh, after that, it was pretty much all on the ground, inside, outside, left side, right side, and they really mixed it up nicely. Rob White going to go wide to the left side. Shipley tight into the right. And they're going to work out of the wishbone as they've been in all game long. 
think they surprised Northwestern a little bit with a wishbone set. There's Charles Hill trying to bounce outside, splits a couple of defenders at the 10, down at about the 16. Boy, is he punishing some of those defensive people today. He is really running with some authority and is uh, knocking people down when he makes the head-to-head -head contact. It's close to first, first down yardage as they're out to about the 16-yard line. They're going to bring the sticks across. Chance for us to tell you, people that bring you uh, Eagle football each and every Sunday night on Cable Channel 20. The leader, the Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penney, b &H Tire, and behind the eight ball. And they stretch the chain. It is just by the point of the football enough for the first down. And the Eagles got another first down to this afternoon. They're seventh to the ball game. They're first on this drive. And now they're out to where they can loosen up a little bit with that offensive football team. Moved it out to about the 17-yard line. That was good second and third effort there by Hill to get him that first down yardage. I mentioned Keith Brown on Mike's side with us today. Of course, uh, farming being his first duty, it's a good agriculture day, so we'll, <laughs> we'll let Brownie get out there and ride the combine to glory today. So we'll take care of business here in Orange City. There's a give Charles Hill back up across the green. Whoa, he's hit hard from behind. That's the way you lose knees right there. He was backing up field and somebody got him right behind the uh, kneecaps. We got a flag way back up near the original line of scrimmage and personal foul going to be the call against the Red Raiders and that's going to tack on some more. Charles with about 10 on that ca carry and there was almost a longer gain than that out of it as Charles was just about set to break free. A little extra pop there on Kelly McClinic, and uh, that's going to cost the Red Raiders 15 yards. Moves the ball out to the 41-yard line. Boy, that sure gives a charge to a drive, and you get 15 tacked on to a 10-yard gain. And the Eagles are on the move again out of the wishbone set, already leading it 7-0 with a minute 40 to go first quarter. Split receiver to the left side. Option play. McClinic got to cut back up inside. He'll go down at about the 44-yard line. Up to make the hit from the secondary is going to be uh, Dave Dow, I believe. And it's going to bring up a second down at about seven to go for a Westmar first down. Football also being brought to you today by First National Bank, Vollmer Shoes, TJ Antiques, Susan Mill Standard, the Lamar Savings Bank, and the Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe. Todd Skolton split wide left. Bolden, Hill, and Pearson at Wishbone backfield. McClinic handing off to Hill, and that was just behind the two lead blockers. Hill plows straight ahead forward and across that 45 to the 47, 48 yard line. Tell you, pretty methodical, almost uninteresting football, but it sure is doggone effective. <laughs> yeah, it's Woody Hayes style of football. Into the final 45 seconds of the opening quarter. Time enough for maybe another play, and then we'll be running to the other side of the 50 for the beginning of the second period. Westmar having the football for just about all of it. Open with a 10-minute, 19-play, 87-yard drive that resulted in the first touchdown. Third down at about three. The Red Raider fans trying to get their defense some help. There's Charles Hill. Got a first down into Red Raider Real Estate inside that 45 to the 43-yard line. Boy, the Red Raiders just don't have a clue where they're coming next. And he popped through there and again almost went the route. A little quick opener that Charles Hill has used very effectively since uh, coming here from the junior college ranks to Westmark College last season. Serving as a good running mate for Steve Moran in his 1,000-yard year. It looks like Charles is well on the way to gaining 1,000 yards, maybe even a record-setting rushing year for Westmark College here in this 1987 season. Well, that's going to do it for the first quarter. It's 7-0. Westmark leading it. They won't have far to go to change in, so let us continue telling you that Gertis Pharmacy, Adler's, Williams & Company, Sweet 16 Lanes, Neats & Grubs, Custom Interiors, and Evans Clothing bring you Westmark football. And we were set. It's cue there to start the second quarter. We'll try her again here. This didn't have a stick set on the sideline, so out of the wishbone. Westmar right down in front of us now on the Northwestern 44-yard line. A little trap. Charles Hill inside the 40, and boys, he's slammed down hard by Dave Bronner. Bronner moved into tackle here this afternoon. He's been a defensive end. We got another flag down on the play right near where the finish to the tackle was made, or at least on that plane. Got a personal foul again against the Red Raiders. It's going to be tacked on to the end of the play, a dead ball foul. Well, this is the kind of 
This is going to be the kind of stuff, I guess, so uh, Westmar was a little concerned about back in the Concordia game, but you're for given I guess when you win 71 to nothing but they knew they had to be more disciplined than that today and it's the Red Raiders that are making those kind of penalty type mistakes here this afternoon first down to the Red Raider 25 yard line remember this one started from the Eagles six yard line another time consuming drive for him we're about 10 seconds into the second quarter Eagles looking to tack on to an already seven to nothing lead back to pass fires over the middle white is there touchdown 25-yarder from the clinic to White, and White makes his first touchdown reception of the year, and the Eagles have gone 94 yards now to score, finishing it off on a touchdown pass from the clinic to White, his third TD strike of the year. There was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the defender slipped. They got one-on-one -on -one in the cornerback. He fell down. White waltzed into the end zone. He's four-yard drive for Westmar. Morey trying to add the point after. Joy Holmberg. Handles a bad center snap, and the point's right to the middle. And the Eagles go up 14 to nothing for Maury. That is uh, now 17 of 19 on PATs this year. Sheldon freshman Jim McPartland got her teed up and kicks off of the wind at his back for the first time today. It's going to be high, end over end. Going to be taken by Huss back at the one-yard line. Five to the 10, hit hard at about the 14-yard line. Down he goes. And uh, Jeff Schwartz on that specialty team doing a high five uh, prance off the side of the field. That was a big hit off that specialty unit. The Suicide Squad's got the Red Raiders pinned in a hole back at about the 14-yard line. And the Eagle defense, which is uh, coming into this series pretty fresh. They only had to play three downs, four downs, I guess, if you want to count the punt in that first quarter. This is only their second time in the field this afternoon. And we've got Mazdan, the quarterback, backed way up inside the 20-yard line. Backed inside the 15. Get a man in motion. Mazdan on the keeper, going to cut back up inside, breaks a tackle down at about the 21-yard line. Boy, are those... Helmets clash into the pads of popping air. Uh, Mike Rogers and Kurt Westhoff there to make the hit for the Westmar Eagles. And he's out to about the 21-yard line. Going to get about eight on the play. It's second down and a couple of yards to go. Maybe the first Raider first down of the ball game. About a minute into the second quarter, it's 14 to nothing. Remember, this Red Raider football team came from way down to beat Doan here, and Westmar lost to Doan. There's, whoa, what a hit inside. You can hear that one way upstairs here. As he went inside to DeHaan, and the freshman out of Orange City carries for about two. And boy, they were two the tough way. <laughs> boy, was there some crunching inside as these two met at the pass. Third down at about a yard to go yet for the first down. Oberson going to split wide to the left side. Defense. Jim Turnagel out here wide to the left, and the quarterback, Mostyn, is going to go down to the backfield. Just a pile of bodies going to be shoved right back into his face. And who was it? Wayne Utick, I believe. Yeah, the Lamar's native, Wayne Utick, just crushed all of that down to the ground at about the 21-yard line. And there's fourth down at two. The defense has done it again. Boy, are they getting serenaded as they come out the field over there from the Westmar Rooters. Yeah, they're going to punt into the wind now. Chris Fisher back. This Chris Fisher, incidentally, there's two Chris Fishers, identical spelling. Get him! And there's a flag. They're going to get the kicker, and that'll keep the Red Raiders in possession of the football. Eagles came for the block, and they're going to rough him a little bit. They almost got the block, but uh, Fisher with a little uh, jo good job of getting the foot in the way of that. On rusher McLeod, I think McLeod's complaining about that a little bit. That uh, Fisher helped find him a little bit too, but you got to credit the acting job on that just a little also. It's Chris Fisher mentioned there's two of them. They got Chris Fisher, the starting offensive guard, a junior out of Glenwood, and then there's Chris Fisher, the sophomore out of Britt. Not in a relation, but identical spellings in the name, and they were backups to each other in that offensive left guard spot. Yeah, they're going to walk it off. It'll be first down yardage, and the Red Raiders are going to get their first first down of the afternoon. Red Raiders, or the Eagles, I should say, have 10 to the lone first down for Northwestern to this point. 
And it took a penalty to give them their first first down. Maybe that'll be the little bit of an ignition this ball club is looking for. Mosden, the freshman out of Linville Sully, quarterbacking at the high school level this time a year ago. Back to pass, fires one over to Herzberg. Herzberg going to make the catch at about the 34-yard line. Jeff Herzberg, who caught 27 passes last year to lead the ball club in pass receiving, has not been a primary target this year. He's checking their stats. He, in fact, has caught only six passes now this season. So uh, he's not been the one that Lynch has looked to. Instead, it's been the wideout Tim Oberson, who's hauled in 15 and led the team in pass receiving coming into the game. Got eight on the play. It's second down and two from the Red Raider 34. A little mix up in the backfield. And Mosdom going to go down in a stack of blue and white at about the 35-yard line. I think he wanted to fake up inside and then cut out to the left and go on the option with Mullenberg. And Mosdom, I think, was uh, cut off from the pass there. He wanted to go outside and wanted any place to go because Mullenberg was trailing the play out to the left and seemed to look, stop and look back into the huddle as Mosdom just tried to salvage what was a broken play by that time. Third down at a yard now. This is where the Eagles stuffed it last time. Let's see if they come up with a big play again. Back to pass. Going down and out, incomplete, trying to go to Ternagel. I think they were looking for the slant over the middle again to Herzberg. Instead, he got confused on what receiver he wanted to go to, and the freshman fired over the head of both of them. Ternagel was there also, and now it's fourth down and one. A bit of a surprising call when they needed short yardage. That's how lack of faith they have in their running game right now. It's only 17 yards a week ago against the St. Ambrose Bees. And they just have not run the ball that well this year. In fact, they have only 528 yards rushing for the year as the day started. Westmar got that in one afternoon two weeks ago. There's McLeod coming across that line of scrimmage early and on a punt situation again. They're going to hand them the first down. They only needed two. Well, come on. So the penalty. Well, McLeod, I'm sure, is going to argue he was drawing off. Might as well take a shot at it, but <laughs> it'll be to no avail, I don't think. Red Raiders are clapping their hands. Well, coaches don't mind that too bad early in the ball game uh, because it is the type of penalty where you know your kids are anxious and they're, they've got uh, their mental edge just right. Oh, they're going to wave it off. Whoa, are we getting a break on this one? And you don't get breaks on the road too often, so you'll take it, and they're going to wave it off. Fourth down and two to go. I don't know what how they arrived at that conclusion, but uh, it certainly is a benefit for the Eagles. Now they will punt it. Chris Fisher back. Safford and Holmberg back at about their own 33 to receive the punt. Eagles going to play for the return. Oh. Kind of got that one out off the end of the foot. And look out there, Safford. And it's finally going to be knocked dead by Chernagel down at about the 41-yard line. So the Eagles are going to come out of this with their best field position of the day. Clinic is two for two on drives today, an 87 and a 94-yard drive. And the Eagles lead at 14-0 with 11-16 to go in the first half. Out of the wishbone set, split receiver to the left side. Charles Hill, oh, the ball shoots up the middle. Still scrambling for it, still loose. I think the Red Raiders got it. And it looks like uh, number 27, Rod Slater, sophomore out of Cherokee, ends up off top of the football. Well, Charles has had a heck of a time with fumbles here as of late, and there's another one. Just shot, shot up field. They kind of stripped it, and it went up field. The Red Raiders got it at the Eagle 47. Now yeah, Mosdom, despite uh, not being very effective here in the opening two drives, in here yet again, there's Mosdom cutting up field inside the 45, inside the 40, down inside the 35, and we got a flag down. Could be a holding call. It very likely is going to bring this one back. Holding going to be the call on the Red Raiders. This one is going to come back. Their biggest offensive play of the day, a 14-yard scamper by Mosdom, and it's all coming back. Penalty going to move them back to their own 46-yard line. That's 45 yards worth of penalties here in the first half on the Red Raiders. 10.49 to go in the first half of football. It's 14-0 Westmar. Mosdom rolling left, takes a look, takes a look, fires in and out of Oberson's hands, and he heard some footsteps. Westoff really leveled him, and uh, over there was Joey Holmberg also to help make the crunch on the play, and the double team on Oberson broke it up as uh, Mosdom whistled one right in there. Second down and 20 to go now for a Red Raider first down. They're at their own 46-yard line. And we've got uh, DeHaan in motion off to the left. Floods that left side with three receivers now. Option to the right side. Flag going to go down, and Mosdom's in trouble. Down he goes as he tried to cut back up inside. Freddie Anderson turning right back up into McLeod. Could again be a blocking via, or I should say a holding or something up there in the line of scrimmage. 
And holding, or legal use of the hands going to be the call this time against the Red Raiders. Little push on the line of scrimmage. This offensive line, big as Red Raider offensive lines usually are, 240, 230, 260, 270, 250 across that front line, but it just doesn't have the talent that uh, some other Northwestern offensive lines have had. That's been part of their problems offensively. When you can't run the football, you usually start looking at your offensive line, and their quarterbacks aren't getting protected to throw the ball like Red Raider teams have in the past. That has been the heart and soul of Red Raider success in the past has been their strong offensive lines. This year, they just seem to have run out of people up there. Now that's going to cost them another five yards or 10 yards. It's second down, and they're looking at 30 now with 10-20 left to go in this first half. Referees step in here again now. They're going to make sure they've got the yardage marked off right. Well, they moved the ball back upfield to the 41. Apparently, they marked off too much yardage. They gave them 10 yards in penalties, and instead it was only a five-yard penalty. Second down over again, back to pass. Over the middle, Alverson makes the catch of the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Goodbye, touchdown. 41 yards from Mostum to Alverson. Boy, you don't throw him any better than that. That was right on the money. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Joe Holmberg, and he threw a perfect strike on a little bit of a post pattern right over the middle. Red Raiders capitalize on the turnover. Recovering a fumble, the extra point by Brummer is good, and the Eagle lead is sliced to 14-7. to seven. Well, momentum so much a big part of football. Let's see where this takes this Red Raider football team. 10-10 to go in the first half. Okay, Brummer got her teed up, kicking it off. That ends up being a 59-yard pass play from uh, Mosdam to Auberson. And the kickoff going to go out of bounds. Heath Fitzsimmons watches her roll. And they'll go back and kick it over again. As the Red Raiders will now kick off from their own 30s into the win, and Westmar's going to improve their field position. Well, Westmar scored in their first two possessions, and then, of course, the fumble on their third possession turned the ball over, gave the Red Raiders some life, and, well, they turned it into points. Even though it was second down at about 25, the Red Raiders able to converge from a long range after the two penalties, and a perfect strike there from Mosdam to the wideout Tim Auberson out of uh, Floyd Valley's program out of the War Eagle Conference. We're going to try it again. Got her teed up. Back on the 30. And this one's a poor kick anyway. Heath Fitzsimmons going to scoop it up at the 35. Cuts up a big hole in the middle. 40, 45, and down at about the 48-yard line. Heath Fitzsimmons. Boy, he had a gap right up the middle, and he, if he had that good Calvin Pierce, Todd Skolton, Rob White type speed, he might have been gone, but... Heath, uh, more of the slashing uh, block buster type running back, and uh, he was able to plow it up the middle for a good kick return of about uh, 9, 10 yards, and the Eagles take over at their own 48-yard line. Going to stay in that wishbone. It's been effective. Todd Skolton going to go wide to the left side, or wide to the right side. Shipley in there, tight end there on the left side. Well, that offensive line's control that line of scrimmage today. There's Kelvin Pierce. Pierce going to slice up the middle. Whoa, is he smacked hard at about the 48 by DeHaan, taken down at about the 47. Boy, did DeHaan put a head-to-head -head click on him at about the 48. There's some hitting in this ball game, but that's kind of tradition with this series. <laughs> this is the 30th meeting here today, and, of course, Northwestern once down 12-0 in this series. Now leads at 17-12 after winning the last 17. They haven't lost since 1969. Westmar won all of the games in the 60s. The two very far back in 1902. They played a couple of times when it was Northwestern Academy then, later at junior college. Here's Kelly McClinic in the option. McClinic going to be hit at about the 46-yard line. Up there from the cornerback spot, Sean Wharton, a, a returning starter on defense, 160-pounder out of Ovoca. Boy, they have some football down there in southwest Iowa. Voca Voha. Third down, and it looks like about four to go yet for the first down for the Eagles. 9.05 left to go in this first half, and Westmar leading it 14 to 7. Well, the Eagles were able to convert on a fourth down on their first drive, made some big third down plays, click on their second drive. Out of the wishbone, McClinic. Going to go second man through, got a first down. Pierce going to get to the outside, and he almost broke it. Down at about the 40-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle going to be made by Kevin Post, linebacker out of Sioux Center. Post uh, actually playing strong safety here today. He can play linebacker or strong safety. With all their injuries, they'd kind of gone to a 44 defense, but now back into their 
uh, 43 look with four deep backs. And when they go to their 44 look, Post comes up, plays a linebacker, shows you his capabilities at 180 pounds. Came up and made a touchdown saving tackle because Pierce was looking for the sideline and nobody had caught him if he got out there. First and 10 for Westmar in the Red Raider 41 yard line. Split receiver here to our near side. Gives up the middle to Pierce. Pierce kind of picking his way upfield. Or check it, it's uh, Bolden. Vernon Bolden carries to about the 40 yard line, 35 yard line. Stop there, 8.03 left to go in this first half, and football being brought to you by Evans Clothing, Godfather Pizza, Arnold Motor Supply, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, Country Kitchen, Rear Auto, Vern Anderson Equipment, Newble Chevrolet, Cruz and Cruz CPA, Sods Bar and Grill, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, and Kitchens Incorporated. Wishbone set, second down at about five to go for the Westmar first down. From the Red Raider 35, Charles Hill up the middle for the first down yardage inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line. Boy, they have just consistently picked off five, six yards at a clip of that running game, and we got a Red Raider down hurt. That's the 13th first down for the Eagles, only two now for the Red Raiders. Got one on the touchdown, of course, and then one by penalty. Remember that first... Uh, First down came after they, of course, uh, roughed the punter on a punting situation. So an injury timeout here. We'll uh, tell you again that uh, football being brought to you by Hotop Jewelry, Taylor Auto, Joe's Movie House, and Appliance in Video City. First and 10 for the Eagles as they're pushing that thing toward the end zone again here in the second quarter. Charles Hill cuts up inside. They just ran student body to the right, and everything went that way. Followed a bevy of lead blockers and inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Second down at about four to go for the first down for Westmar with 6.51 to go in this first half. And, of course, Westmar, if you joined us late here on this Sunday evening, opened the ball game with a 10-minute, 19-play, 87-yard drive. Next time they get the ball, they win 94 yards in uh, eight plays and got a touchdown to the end of it. Uh, a TD pass from McClinic to White. McClinic scored the first touchdown on a quarterback keeper. There's the misdirection up the middle. Bit of a draw there by Hill, and Hill going to carry it about the 16, and that's good for another first down. That'll be good for another seven yards. Well, that was a fake pitch to the outside and a little uh, trap up the middle, and uh, Hill blasted into the secondary again. By the way, this guy runs and breaks tackles. You don't want this guy loose in the secondary if you're the opponent because he is tough to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Bronner was the guy hurt, and they're working on him on the sidelines for Northwestern. Boy, it has been just a steady stream of people into that uh, rehabilitation clinic for Northwestern, kind of watching them come out to warm up today. There were a lot of people on crutches, and it's just been a tough year with a lot of injuries for this football team. First and 10 for Westmar in the 16-yard line. Eagle fans across the way are enjoying this beautiful sunny afternoon at Devaloy Field as the Red Raiders reeling 14 to 7. And the Eagles are threatening to go up again by two touchdowns. Vernon Bolden inside. Bolden going to be stopped for maybe a yard gain inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Well, remember the season started by snapping a 16-game losing streak to Buena Vista. I think those were two of the initial goals was to end those two long losing streaks, something even the Jaggets Institute teams couldn't do. They turned a program around that was long overdue for winning seasons, but their two losses year after year were always to Northwestern and to Buena Vista, and they weren't even close ball games. This time, Westmar breaks into a deuce backfield, come out of the wishbone, pitch out, Pierce to the 10, flag going to go down to about the 7, and I think that's going to be a penalty against Westmar. You'd guess uh, probably a hold out where that flag was thrown. And the referee is going to tell us right now exactly what they caught the guilty party doing uh, below the waist block. And either way, it's going to be damaging because instead of having the ball first and goal in about the seven, we're going to march this one back. Well, that 15-yard penalty moves us from the seven clear out to the 26. So a devastating penalty on a drive that... Had us down there knocking at the door. Back into the wishbone set now with two split receivers. Westmar ran option out of this last time. Here they go again. McClinic in trouble. Stumbles and down he goes at the 30-yard line. 
And Dow came in for the secondary, and uh, Sean Wharton came up from a cornerback spot, and those two came up quickly and reacted well to the option play. Well, there's something you can maybe register for future reference because those secondary people really close fast on an option with two wideouts. Maybe you can pull up and throw out of that because there's got to be somebody open in the secondary if they're going to keep those uh, secondary people up there playing the run as tough as that. Timeout, Westmar. Okay, Westmar faced with a big challenge here. Third down, and they're looking at about uh, 22 yards to go over the first down. Got to test that secondary. Three of the four graduated for Northwestern from there. Back to pass. McClinic looking, looking. Firing down there for Shipley. Did he get it? Touchdown. What a catch. What a catch by Shipley. McClinic's pass was to the wrong side. He turned him completely around, falling down in the end zone. Somehow he caught it, trapped it against the hip. You had to wait to see if the ball jarred against the ground as he came down. What a remarkable catch by Shipley. His first touchdown of the year. That one will be remembered in this series as one of the great plays. Here's the point after. Kick is up and good. 30-yard TD pass, McClinic with two touchdown strikes and a touchdown running, and Morey has added points after 21-7, a big play in this football game. I'll tell you, folks, we had the ability for instant replay. We'd look at that one again for you, but unfortunately, we haven't developed our techniques here to that extent, but boy, that was a beauty. Back to the 8, to the 10, to the 15, 20, and Huss... Der Ochterhoff, Ochterhoff going to return this kickoff for the Red Raiders. And uh, back out to about the 25-yard line. Red Raiders looking at about 408 and a half and trailing now by two touchdowns again at 21 to 7. So Westmark, you just keep from breaking down. They have found the end zone on all drives except the one they fumbled it away. They tried to penalize themselves out of the touchdown there, but they still came back and got it. McClinic firing into the secondary. Really, the coverage wasn't bad on that play either for the Red Raiders. It was just Shipley making a remarkable catch. Back to pass. Herzberg going to make the catch at about the 30 down to the 32-yard line. Hancher and Holmberg and Westhoff were all there to make the hit. Joe Holmberg. Of course, uh, Joey was District 15 Player of the Week after the Concordia game. Kelvin Pierce won it offensively. So in every week except the Dana ball game, we've had at least one uh, uh, Player of the Week in the District 15 balloting. Frenchie. Joe Holmberg have both won it defensively. Kelvin Pierce and Charles Hill and Todd Scolton have won it offensively. Back to pass. Mazdam a lot of time. Throws out there for Chernagel and down he goes. Joey Holmberg came up, put a punishing blow on him, and Westhoff going to nail him pretty good. And Kurt Westhoff still down, face down. All the action came right back to him, and Westhoff still down. Slow getting up. So I think just got stung a little bit. He'll be back, I think. He came off under his own ability, kind of groggily, but everything came right back to him, and he met him at the pass, and I think uh, he kind of got bent back a little bit. There's a flag down. There's the give up the middle to Mullenberg, and Mullenberg out over the 45 to the 46-yard line. I think this one will come back. They threw it where there's usually a blocking penalty going to be made. Mike Rogers already clapping his hands, so this one's coming back too. Boy, the Raiders having some problems offensively anyway this year, and they're not helping their cause much today because of penalties. This team just has no confidence in a running game at all. Kind of back uh, as if, you know, I guess we can identify with that back in the uh, Zahoric era when we threw the ball so much, and really we had very little confidence in a running game at that point in time in our football program. 60 yards worth of penalties now on the Red Raiders, and that'll move them back to the 34, take away a nice gain by Mullenberg. 3.02 left to go in this first half. It's 21 to 7 Westmar. McClinic has thrown two touchdown passes and run for one. It's kind of a Kelly McClinic day. Maybe he'll be a District 15 honoree when this one's over. Certainly rolling up the total offense because his first two touchdown drives were from uh, beyond 85 yards away. Back to pass. Mosden fires down there for Iverson. That is going to be incomplete. Nice play by Seeloff. Well, that was kind of the plan of attack going right at Seeloff. Because he has played so soft, they felt like they could either catch it in front of him or if he's going to play him up close, go deep on him. And that time, Seeloff separated Auberson from the football. 
Second down at about 15 to go now for the Red Raiders. Probably going to have to go more and more as this game develops. Airborne. Westmore's had 10 interceptions this year. Mosden back. Now he's looking, scrambling, firing. Pass is going to be caught by it. No, he trapped it against the ground. No catch by Herzberg as it came sliding into the Northwestern sideline. Seeloff and Frenchie Holmberg were there on the coverage. Mark McLeod back there with a fist in the air, stalling him on to even higher levels of play as this defense is... Uh, Played pretty well. We got uh, Robert Johnson in here now, incidentally, for Kevin West, or for uh, Kurt Westhoff. And Robert seeing his first action. Here's Patrick Walton checking in, and Dan Crotzel going to lumber off the field. <laughs> like a big old grizzly bear. Back to pass. Straight drop back for Mosden. Throws over the middle. Oberson again. And Joey Holmberg with a spectacular defensive play. Almost intercepted it. There's... The experience of a Joe Holmberg timed that one perfectly. Boy, if he'd have missed it, it'd have been six more for the Red Raiders. And now that'll bring up a fourth down and 15. And the Red Raiders are going to give it back to the Eagles on the punting unit. Fisher's back to punt. Oh, he kicks away a low-line driver. And it's going to hit one of the Red Raiders in the seat of the pants as they were going downfield for coverage. And it's going to be down right on the midfield stripe. I'll tell you what, that's dangerous from a Westmar standpoint. Could have, could have, it uh, could have easily rolled down and hit one of the Eagles that were just uh, moving back for block protection for their kick returners. So they're going to move it actually back over the northwestern side of the 50, about a football's length, into Red Raider territory. And the Eagles with 2.14 to go, maybe in a hurry-up mode, but they've got a shot yet at finding the end zone once again here before halftime. We're going to have to go back the last time they got 20-plus points in this series. Of course, they got 30 back in the 1980 game and a 31-30 heartbreaker that we led 24-7 at one point. Out of the wishbone set. Option play to the right. McClinic on the keeper. McClinic going to pitch it out to Hill with a 45-40, 35-30, 25-20, 15, 10. Out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Oh, yeah, don't run the option play much better than that. I'll tell you, this football team is probably putting together an entire season of highlights in this one first half of football here in Orange City. And now the Eagles easily could punch it in for yet another touchdown at the six-yard line, first and goal to go. And that one's going to be about a 44-yard ramble from the midfield stripe. McClinic picked up about three of it, then pitched back to Hill, and by that time, the secondary had converged on McClinic, and Hill got the corner turn and was down that sideline. Only a pursuit angle saved the touchdown. Eagles knocking on the door again. 21-7, to they lead it, and are threatening to push this open to a three-touchdown lead. This Red Raider team has been a great comeback team through the years, so you don't certainly want to start writing this one up in the W column, but the Eagles are in command here as we're approaching halftime. Out of the wishbone set, first and goal at the six-yard line of McClinic. Going to give it to Charles Hill. Hill cuts back up inside, down to about the one-yard line. Didn't quite get there. Stack of red shirts kept him out. As they tried to give it to Hill. Hill, I guess, deserves it after the nice run on the option play. Hill with five touchdowns as the day starts. And, of course, is second in the nation in rushing, and he's adding to that total. That 44-yard gallop is longest of the day, and that's going to push him toward that 100-yard barrier. He's been there every game but one this year. And, and the Doan game, of course, was the one that he came up a little short. McClinic looks over that Red Raider defense. In behind Sparing, going to give it to Hill. Hill blasting in there for the touchdown. Charles Hill, who set it up with a long run, gets it on two straight carries inside the 10 and goes in from the one-yard line for his first touchdown of the day, sixth of the season. And the Eagles have opened it up to a three-touchdown lead at 27-7. The Eagles had to use a timeout there because I think Joe Holmberg had problems with his helmet, and he's the holder, so they had to take a timeout so he could get a helmet on to get in there and hold for Maury. Maury perfect again. Uh, makes Maury 19 of 21 for the year in extra points. Four for four today, 28-7. to Westmar with a minute 19 to go before halftime. Jim McPartland, who's been busy on that kickoff team today, got her teed up one last time here in the first half. End over end with a wind at his back. Huss at the two, back to the five, to the 10, here to the right side of the 15, and it opens up like the Red Sea, 30-35, and down at about the 38-yard line. Here's Westhoff back in there again, making the tackle. And also for 
Westmar College on that specialty team, Todd Peterson, number 49, in there along with Westoff to make the head. Good to see Westoff back in there. He kind of felt it take about uh, half a team to keep him off the field from coming back in there because that guy loves his football. He's actually uh, not in here right now, though. They take him, take him back out of there on defense, and uh, Robert Johnson, along with Freddie Anderson, still in there. McLeod's kind of backed off the defensive end to play a linebacker. Whoa, Mazda is nailed by Chad Shook, freshman out of Denison. Hit him right in the breastbone as he had the hammer cocked and he was ready to fire downfield. Pass rush, the second sack, I believe, today for that Westmar defense. Back at the 30. They're going to go without a huddle. 52 seconds to go before halftime. Mazdam over the middle. It's going to be tipped and incomplete. Almost intercepted. Hits. Hit Seeloff in the hands up in the air, and then he couldn't find it again. Pass was behind Ternagel. He got a flag down, though. Mark McLeod chasing that referee around, so you kind of guess it might be on Westmore. I think it was maybe a late hit on that QB, and the Eagles going to march the defense back. That's the kind of stuff that I uh, guess the part of stuff they've got to heal on this football team. It seems like when they get ahead, that's when they really start putting a uh, penalty yardage tacked on there. And oddly enough, this team in the three wins have been the three games they've had over 100 yards and penalties. Coach Maisel says he wants aggressiveness, but he wants to have it kind of under control. So roughing the passer makes it first and 10 out to the 45. Mazda in play action, throwing a little pitch back, and it's going to be for not though. DeHaan takes the pitch from Chernagel, but uh, Marcus Hancher was wise to that. He and Joey Holmberg teamed up to put the whole thing down at about the 48-yard line. A little turn in there to Chernagel. He pitched back to the trailer, Craig DeHaan, and DeHaan was taken out of bounds immediately. He only got another yard or two off of it. Picked up about eight all total on the play, and it's going to be a second down and two to go from the Westmar 48. 40 seconds left to play before halftime. Eagle defense just can't afford to get hit with a quick touchdown here before halftime. Mazden back over the middle. Incomplete. Well timed by Frenchy Holmberg, who separated Kuiper from the football. They're down in two now, and there's 34 seconds left in the clock before intermission. Back to pass. Mazdam down over the middle. It's going to be incomplete. Threw it behind Chernagel. Triple coverage out there, but actually Chernagel had gotten behind everybody. Had the ball been over the different shoulder, but he threw it behind him into the opposite shoulder he was looking over. Incomplete. It's fourth and two, and the whole first half for Northwestern may hinge on this one play if they're going to be able to get back in the ball game before intermission with 29 seconds to go. 28 to seven Westmar. The last time they scored this many points was in 1980 when they dropped a tough luck 31-30 ball game. Fourth down, two to go. Mazdam away from center. Straight drop back, lots of protection. Down and out, it's gonna be caught by Chernagel and out of bounds. That time, uh, Joey Holmberg tried to slip in there in front, knock it away, and just mistimed it. 22 seconds to go in the first half. It's going to move the ball to the 36-yard line, makes it a first and 10 for the Red Raiders. Stops the clock as the first down sticks move, and he also got out of bounds. Comes Oberson in, Kuiper out. Oberson and Kuiper alternate every other play, bringing plays with them. And Mazdam, has got him on the move, but does he have enough time? 22 seconds left to go. This kid's got a great arm. Led Linville Sully to the 1A state championship last year in high school football. Mullenberg in motion to the left side. Back to pass. The rush is there. He's going to be hit as he let her go. Incomplete. Holmberg with perfect coverage. Oohs and ahs here from the Red Raiders side. They thought there was pass interference, but there was two referees looking right on the play, and they ruled Holmberg timed it perfectly. Second down at about 10 to go now for the Red Raiders. Kuiper in motion from right across the field to the left side. Back to pass, heavy rush. Hit as he let her go. Mazdam going to have this one picked off by Holmberg at the nine-yard line with nine seconds to go. Joey playing Auberson perfectly, and there's a flag down, though. This may wipe the whole thing out. Mazdam, just as he released the ball, got smacked right in the headgear. The penalty won't be for that. It's more toward the line of scrimmage. And the Red Raiders are pointing that it's going to be against the Eagles. And an illegal block below the waist. 
against the Eagles, which was a strange call, and the fact that Holmberg made the interception and fell down immediately, so it had to happen after the interception. We still get the ball? If that was the case, though, we'd still have the we'd have the football, but apparently we're not going to. They still got the defense on the field, so Crazy. it's going to be marked off against the Eagles. The Red Raiders are going to maintain control of the football, so we'd have to see the ruling on that, I guess, to understand that call. He's given a signal for the hit below the knees against Westmar. 28-7, and the Raiders are down to the 21-yard line. Nine seconds to go. Two receivers out here to the right side. One split to the left, and now Mullenberg in motion off to the left. Double receivers on both sides. Westmark coming with a blitz. Back to pass. Mawson's going to go down under a swarm of eagles. So they didn't keep anybody in for protection, and it cost them the chance to get on the scoreboard before halftime. Half has come. 28-7. Westmark by three touchdowns. The defense bended a heck of a lot there before halftime, but time was on their side, and they were able to run the last nine seconds out thanks to the quarterback sack. The clubs are back out here. We're nearing the start of the second half. A uh, few stats on that first half of football. Westmar out first down Northwestern, 14-7. Out uh, rushed him 220 to five, and uh, Northwestern had the edge in passing mostly because of that last drive that saw them have to try and hurry down there in field position, in uh, scoring position. 103 to 54, the passing differential. Northwestern with the edge there in total offense. Westmar 274 to 118 for the Raiders. Westmar's hit two of three through the air. Both went for touchdowns. Of course, the one they didn't complete was dropped, and it was. Headed for the end zone. Wide open Todd Skolton would have scored if he'd have caught it, and he just uh, flat out dropped it on that first drive. But Westmar went on to score anyway. Red Raiders are 6 of 15 and have thrown one interception, and that, of course, preserved the first half lead of 28 to 7 for Westmar. And McPartland going to kick off into the wind, going to be taken by Huss at the 11, 15 20, stumbles and falls at about the 23 yard line, and we're underway in this second half of football. And the 35-game home field winning streak on the line, the 17-game winning streak in the series could all go out the window here today. The Raiders don't come back from three touchdowns. And the way they played through the first five games, it would seem uh, highly unlikely they've got that kind of weaponry this year to make that kind of a comeback. But we'll see. 30 more minutes of tough, hard-fought football to go here this afternoon before what is a very enthusiastic Westmar crowd across the way and talk to some of the folks at halftime and they're pleased to say the least at what they've seen in the first 30 minutes. Back to pass, Mosdem going to flip it out of Mullenberg. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Foot race on now. Hancher tries to get him in the cutback. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. There it is. 76 yards. Just a little flip out there to Mullenberg in the flat. And Mullenberg did a lot of individual effort on his own using his blockers. Well, boy, did he set up the blocking all the way down the field and zigzagged his way all the way down there for 76 yards and a big touchdown to open the second half of the Red Raiders. There we go right away. They're back in the ballgame now, 28-13, and Brummer trying to make it 28-14. Well, that should have got the Eagles' attention anyway if they thought this thing was over. <laughs> There's a bad snap on the extra point try, and they won't get it. So now it's 28-13, and that's the way she's going to stay. We'll go back upfield and kick her off. 20 seconds. Uh, got a touchdown registered, so we'll be back with the uh, kickoff now as they head back upfield. Summer are going to kick it off to Skolton at about the six. To the 10, 15, 20, slips and falls down at the 19-yard line on his own. That's the first kickoff return for Skolton since uh, the opener in the ballgame that launched the Eagles downfield for their first drive of the day, a 10-minute, 19 play, 87-yard drive to open the ballgame here this afternoon and kind of set the tone. But now they're it's 28 to 40, or 20, 13. And the Red Raiders have bounced right back into this football game with a 76-yard pass play from Mosdem to Mullenberg. That was uh, Mosdem's second pass touchdown this uh, particular Saturday. Threw one earlier to Auberson. That cut the Eagle lead to 14-7 at that point. There's the give back up the middle to Bolden. Vernon Bolden carries out over the 25 to the 28-yard line. Now it really becomes mandatory. The Eagles come out and put together a nice long 
ground crunching, time consuming drive to kind of swing some momentum back again. Red Raiders got a fire lit on them with that big pass play and dandy run by Mullenberg. Kevin Post up to make that last tackle. Pick up of nine, second down, a yard to go. And we're a minute into this second half of football. 28-13, Eagles by two touchdowns. Out of the wishbone set. A little mix up in the backfield and really not much yardage at all inside there. Clinic turn, ran into Bolden first, then ran into the second guy through Charles Hill, and that was just destined to be a bust from the very beginning. Well, believe it or not, they turned it into a plus and got a first down out of it. They didn't need much, so any little bit they got on it probably got them a first down, and they moved the sticks out to the 30. That shows you maybe better than anything else today that we could say how much our offensive line's probably controlling things. They're just shoving that Northwestern defensive interior back a little bit. See uh, Dave Bronner in there defensively for Northwestern. Remember, he went out hurt in that first half. There's a give to Pierce, and Pierce going to be taken back in the backfield for a loss down at the 28-yard line. Second down and 12. Now the Red Raiders obviously in a aroused football team. I'm sure they got quite a pep talk at halftime from Coach Corver, and they had something big happen right away to give them an even bigger fire underneath there. And now all they need was a turnover, and they would be back in the hunt here this afternoon. 12.55 left to go, third quarter. Wishbone set, option play left side. McClinic cuts back upfield at across the 30 to the 32-33 yard line. And Westmar's looking at a third and about eight, it looks like, yet for the first down. They may be flushed to the air. Again, McClinic two for three in that first half. Both completions went for touchdowns. Threw one to White and one to Shipley. Shipley's was just an outstanding catch. And boy, since the Raiders struck quickly to start the second half, that catch by Shipley looks bigger and bigger now. That was the last touchdown just before, or like second to the last one just before ha halftime as uh, Charles Hill took one in just prior to intermission. There's a give with a little misdirection. Charles Hill out over the 40 to about the 42 yard line. Got him a first down. That was kind of a surprising call on third down and eight yards to go. Tackle gonna be made by Rod Slater. Slater got his uh, bell rung a little bit. He rammed it right into the thigh pad of Charles Hill. And that's not the place you want to try and take this guy with your head. Out to the 41-yard line, first and 10 for Westmar. Today, the 30th meeting between these two old rivals. First ones were back in 1902, then they didn't play again until 1960, and they played every year since then. That's, I believe, about the time Northwestern became a four-year credited college then. There's Vernon Bolden up the middle. Bolden out over the 45, about the 47. Northwestern has been vulnerable right up to Pike all year long. That's where I understand St. Ambrose got so much yardage last week, was just right at the center. And Westmar's had a lot of success coming back up inside, particularly with the trap plays today. And they have been susceptible to the traps this year. Red Raiders in jeopardy of falling to two and four. They were eight and two last year, remember, thanks to a forefoot. Although losing 69 to nothing in the opener or in the finale up at Duluth, there's a fumble right into the hands of DeHaan. DeHaan still on his feet. 50, 45, out of bounds at the 40. Charles Hill has that one raked loose. It shot upfield right to DeHaan, and DeHaan goes 10 yards back upfield. The Red Raiders got the turnover they were looking for. To get back to elaborate on the story, the Red Raiders suffered their ultimate humiliation, probably the worst in the school's history, 69 to nothing over the Metrodome to Duluth, Minnesota Duluth, in the last game of the season. That ultimately was four-footed back to them, though. But how much of a devastation mentally that may have had on this program could have been a carryover value. Red Raiders with a chance to get back to within a touchdown now. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Here's DeHaan in motion back to the left side. Monston back to pass, and he looked for his receiver. He wasn't out there. Herzberg got held up on the line of scrimmage by Mike Rogers and couldn't get out of the pattern. Monston going to have to eat it, and McLeod makes the tackle along with Kratzel. Monston faked and then wanted to go right up for the little pop over the middle, but Herzberg wasn't there. And finally, he hustled out of the pattern. 
So I know he got held up on the line of scrimmage or just uh, lost the track of the play they were running. In any case, he wasn't there when he was uh, supposed to be. Second down and 10. 10-20 10 left to go in the third quarter. Option play. Mazdam cuts back up inside. 30, 25. Taken down by Westhoff, but it's a first down to the 23-yard line. Boy, this Red Raider team starting to gain a little momentum. So we better not write this one into the books yet. 30 tough minutes to go here as we started the second half with Westmar leading at 28-7. Already it's down to 28-13. That took less than 40 seconds into the second half, and the Eagles were ahead by one less touchdown, and now the Red Raiders are driving again. There's DeHaan inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. We got a flag down, though. These penalties have been hurting the Red Raiders today, and this one again could possibly be now yeah, it's going to go against the Eagles this time. Looks like it was a late hit. The referee's going to give us a signal. Personal foul against the Eagles. Late hit. Going to move it inside the 10. First and goal to go over the Red Raiders. Mosdom's got him set down. Well, that stand just before halftime looks real big now. As the Red Raiders threatening to come back to within a touchdown. Eagles kind of showing blitz. There's the option. Bad pitch. And Westmar's got it. McLeod is there and makes the recovery. Westmar stopped him. Pitch was behind the intended pitch man. What a break. For Northwestern, uh, Kyle Okteroff. And McLeod was right back there to pounce on it. The Eagles just got a big, big turnover in this ball game, And that should help swing momentum again. So a fumble for a fumble. And everybody comes up empty. Credit the hit in there on the quarterback. Forced the early pitch and the contact was timed right. Don't know who made the hit in there. That's straight up the middle of Vernon Bolden. Bolden going to drive it out to about the 23, 24 yard line. Boy, you're going to look back on this ball game and think of a lot of big plays. That one's going to rank in there with some of the biggest, though. At the time it came and the way the momentum was swinging, that couldn't have been... Uh, more of a timely play for Westmar than that one turned out to be. Especially they can take it on down now and get some points in the board. It's obvious they're going to have to score some more. 28-13. Eight and a half minutes to go in what's been a fast-moving third quarter. McClinic's got him. Set down to the wishbone set. White out here split wide right. Going to come in the misdirection of Charles Hill. Hill's going to be stopped short of the 25. About the 24-yard line. He may have got a half a yard, but nothing more on that. Also Rob, Clemens. Rob Clemens in there to help make the tackle for the Red Raiders. Third down at about six to go for Westmar. And clicking over that Northwestern defense. Big third down play coming up here. There's second man through Pierce. Pierce going to be headed about the 28. 27, 28 yard line. It'll be short of the first down. This will be Westmar's first punt of the afternoon coming up, and it's going to be into the win. And averaging about 33, 34 yards per punt. He's going to be kicking into a stiff southerly breeze, though. Playing for the return. Going to kick it up there, and it's going to just die as the wind makes uh, this one just uh, float down and go laterally out of bounds near midfield. Going to mark it on about the 49 and a half, just on the Westmar side of the 50. And here come the Red Raiders on offensively. But the turnover, costly to them because it forces them back upfield and needing to reload now. Mosdam again got a surprise start here today. Heard the rumors as we got here that he would be starting. And Lynch has not seen the field yet. He's been the starter for most of two seasons now, or at least a season and a half. Quarterback this team for the first five games. But Mosdam, the freshman out of Linville, Sully, getting a chance this time. 28-13, 6.41 to go third quarter. Slot to the left. Back to pass. Mosdam throws it out to Mullenberg. Mullenberg going to be hit down by Joey Holmberg at about the 47-yard line. This was the same play. They went for a touchdown in the opening 30 seconds of the second half. A little flip out there to Mullenberg in the flat. Going to run, runs uh, parallel to the line of scrimmage and then makes the catch and had the good downfield blocking in that first touchdown. 76 yards that's got the Red Raiders back in this ball game. Second down and about seven to go for the first down from the Eagle, 46. 
Gives to DeHaan. Boys, he hit. Just got the football and somebody put the calls to him. See who's down underneath there, made that good contact. From the way it came, you kind of guess it was one of those linebackers. Oh, it's Kratzel. Kratzel, knife down underneath. And that's a lot of baby beef there at uh, 260 pounds. Junior out of Schuyler. Of course, he played some high school football in the Schmazel system at Schuyler. Third down and about four to go for the Red Raider. First down from the Eagle 43. 540 left to go in the third quarter. Option play. Pitch out, Mullenberg, 40, 35, first down. And Mostum kind of slow getting up. Mostum was hit again by Mike Rogers, forcing to pitch early, but nobody had the pitch man. And Mullenberg upfield for a good gain and a first down. Red Raiders are on the move again. Well, they have executed a lot better here so far in the opening period of the second half. And defensively, they've been a little tougher. Field positions had a lot to do with it. Westmar's been pinned in their own end so far. Split receivers to the right side. Deuce backfield. Quarterback sneak. Mazdam inside the 30 to about the 26-yard line. Nine-yard quarterback sneak. I'll tell you what, this Mazdam is starting to gain more and more confidence as this half rolls on, too. He's starting to get comfortable out there, and this is a kid that can hurt you. A lot of talent. You're going to see him. Three years after this, just a freshman. Talked about Craig DeHaan in the backfield today. You remember he was the starting quarterback for two and part of a third game last year and then went down to the knee injury. Didn't play enough that he couldn't get earn a red shirt, so he's actually a, a freshman again this year and in the backfield as a running back. Second and a yard, straight ahead to DeHaan, and he's got a first down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Tackle going to be made by Freddie Anderson. And also uh, Oswald. And they're going to move the sticks again. And Westmar defensively needs to make something big happen. Four and a half minutes left to go in this third quarter. It's 28-13. Westmar can just get into the fourth quarter with a two-touchdown lead. They might be in business. But the Red Raiders, for a second time, second straight time, threatening. They killed themselves with a fumble last time and a bad pitch out and an option play. Back to pass, Mosden pumps, pumps, fumble! Westmar's got it again! Mike Rogers has got it! Somebody jarred the ball out of his grasp as he was just uh, putting it back to the ear to cock it to fire it. I think Dan Crotzel jarred it out of there. Somebody grabbed him and by the arm and shook it loose, and Mike Rogers was right there to pounce on the loose pigskin, and the Eagles have done it again. Smart takes over, throw on 25-yard line. Boy, how valiantly this defense has played. Come up with a big place today when they needed it. Back to pass. Airing it out for Rob White. It's going to be over his head. Threw it into the wind and it kind of sail on Kelly a little bit. McClinic misfires over the head of the intended receiver. Well, if you're going to, I guess, miss your man, you better miss it long and into the sidelines. And nobody was going to get that one. Dave Dow out there on the coverage. Second down, 10 to go in the wishbone set. Option play, McClinic going to pitch it out to Kelvin Pierce. 25-30, 35, fumbles out of bounds, but it looks like enough for another Westmar first down. We'll see where they spot. It looks like right on the 35, and that's right where the sticks were stretched up to, so we'll see if they give them a first down. It's going to be how they place the football on that yard stripe. They're going to get the chain stretched back, all the kinks out of them. Of course, the chain gang abandoned the sidelines there as the play came right to them. And just by the tip of the football, the Eagles got that first down right along their sideline over there. Wishbone set straight ahead, Vernon Bolden, 40, 45, look out, he's got speed, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, down to about the 13, and he's out of bounds, saved the touchdown. Brent DeHaan took him out. Vernon Bolden right up the middle and a quick opener in the Eagles with their biggest play of the second half and the longest run from scrimmage for Vernon Bolden, the freshman at a Wyandatch, New York, 190-pounder. This will be the last you'll see of this kid. He's got a great future. If we can keep him happy here at Westmar. Of course, he got the full ride offer to Temple, so at least somebody at a higher level of football than Westmar plays thought he had the talent, and we're glad to have him to Westmar. A few more runs like that. Pretty hard not to stay satisfied, I guess. <laughs> He's got the Eagles down there knocking at the door again at the 13-yard line. Vernon Bolden going to go left. 
There's a give up the middle to Kelvin Pierce, and Pierce going to knife inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line. Of course, uh, projected backfield next year would be Bolden and Pierce side by side, and I think we're in for some exciting football from those two. Charles Hill playing his senior season here. Be somebody else's turn to have a shot at the 1,000-yard barrier next year. And, of course, Bolden or Pierce, either one, could be candidates for that. 3-13 to go third quarter, 28-13 ball game. Westmore threatening for more. The momentum has kind of swung back now. Two fumbles by the Red Raider offense when they were threatening for points. Charles Hill circles the wagons at about the five, and he's down to about the two-yard line. Didn't quite get the corner completely turned. He couldn't get his shoulder squared up to the goal line. If he had, I think he'd have been able to blast in, but... Looks like a first and goal, though. They got him a first down on the play. Not the touchdown, but the first down, and his first and goal on the two-yard line. Comes uh, Rob White in with a play. Skolton checks out of there. And McClinic going to bring that offensive line up to the line of scrimmage. Walheisen and Barton on the right side. to get Pauly and uh, Bowling over there on the left and spurring up over the football. McClinic down under center. Bolden in motion off to the left. McClinic on a quarterback sneak. Touchdown. McClinic with his second touchdown of to the ball game. He's thrown for two and scored two. And McClinic's turning this into kind of a personal showcase after his disappointment last year. Kelly, of course, had the uh, long afternoon last year in the 6 0 loss. Kelly throwing just, uh, hitting just five of 25 passes and throwing for two interceptions. So I think he wanted to redeem himself in this afternoon, and he's done more than that. As he engineers the team downfield for about 80 yards on this drive after about 75 yards, I think, after the fumble recovery by Mike Rogers. Joey Holmberg going to spot it for Mike Morey. The kick is up. It's good. He stays perfect. 35-13, Westmar, the most points they've scored since they, I guess, last won in the series in the 60s. 254 left to play third quarter, and the Eagles are on top. Well, 41 points in 1965, the most Westmar scored in a winning cause since uh, the 35 here today. Up the middle, there's Huss, 35-40. This kid's got speed to the 50, to the 40. Fumble! And Westmar's going to get it. Eagles have the football. And the kicker, McPartland, up off the pigskin. McPartland was the last man that had a shot at him as Huss was making the final cutback. And somebody stripped the ball, and it came out of there, and Westmore on top of it. The Eagles got another big fumble. Well, maybe Ostermeyer got the fumble, I think. McPartland came out of there with the football, but I think Ostermeyer down underneath ended up making the recovery on the specialty team. He's, of course, a freshman out of Akron. Pat Ostermeyer has been playing well on those JV teams that are unbeaten yet this year and Westmar takes over at their own 44-yard line. Boy, can too many more things go wrong for a Red Raider football team here today. But it's not just a mistake today. It's been the way their season's gone for them this year and they're about ready to reel to a 2-4 and four football team. You know, at the middle of Bolden, Bolden going to push the pile to about the 50. 2.40 left to go third quarter and Westmar leading 35-13 well, if there was any doubt, the momentum had swung back to the silver and blue. That should have done it, that fumble on the kickoff. Second down and five to go. 1964, Westmar scored 48 points, the most in this series by Westmar. Bolden going to go up the middle to the 50. And then in 65, got 41. So that was the highest point total since... Uh, prior to today, or I guess they haven't met the 41 yet, but uh, this is the most scored since that 41 points in 65. 35-13, still got another quarter and just about a minute 40 of this one left. So the Eagles could make this another record-setting day for them and a memorable day against Northwestern football teams. They're going to end the drought. I think that's becoming more and more obvious here this afternoon and snap a long, losing streak, or long winning streak here at home for Northwestern. Hill on the straight dive play. Flags go down. A few fisticuffs and a few angry words exchanged inside. A few frustrations being exhibited. I think Byron Bowling got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. He got into a little pushing match there with Brian Vanderswag, junior out of Ospers. 
whether Vanderswag started or not, all they saw was Bowling finishing it, and it's going to be a personal foul against Westmark. Kelly McClinic kind of gave an angry response to that decision, so I think he saw it differently. Oftentimes, the penalty always goes against the guy that retaliates after the initial push or blow was uh, dealt. Not always, not the first one usually gets caught. So that's going to push the ball 15 yards back toward the Westmark goal line, and that'll bring up a third down, and it looks like about 16 to go, fourth down at about 16 to go. Ball going to be back at the 38-yard line. Minute 15 to go, third quarter. Rob White in there to punt. Charles Hill, of course, had 164 yards in the first half rushing, so he's going to be closing in on a possible 200-yard day here. Rob White with just his second punt, and they've both been this quarter. Kick's going to go straight up in the air. Red Raiders didn't know where it was, so that was dangerous for them. Could have come down and hit one of them. John Barton going to down it at the 49-yard line on the Westmark side of the 50. So the Red Raiders get a big opportunity here. Split receivers to both sides are in the pro set. Bear attack. First and 10 on the Westmar 49-yard line. Mosden back, fires over the middle. Chernago can't hang on. Joe Holmberg. And looks like Brad T. Crotzel were there to make the hit. Crotzel hit him high, and uh, Joey had him by the legs. And that jarred the ball out of there. Chernago almost made a remarkable catch on it. Second and 10. Ends left to go in the third quarter. Westmar leading at 35-13. Option play, Mosdom, Kurt Westhoff, hit him at about the 48, and down he went. Boy, Westhoff uh, had him in his sights. I think uh, Mosdom realized quickly he was in trouble because uh, you don't want to be one-on-one -on -one with Kurt Westhoff. You're not going to win too many of those personal duels. Mosdom a little outmatched. Westhoff gave him a pretty good lick. Third down at about... Nine to go for a Red Raider first down to keep this drive alive. After the short punt by White. Mosdom looking over that Westmar defense. Eagles coming in a blitz. Mosdom rolling right, 50, 45, and fumbles the football again. I think the Red Raiders may have got on this one. Oh, he went airborne. The ball comes shooting out of there. And again, a few tempers flare. No flags have gone yet, but there's some pushing and shoving. I think Oberson got on it and saved the day for the Raiders. First and 10 for Mosdom, and he's coming out of there limping. Boy, was he given a lick by that secondary. Westmar's really putting some hits on. It's probably the best hitting game that Westmar's had this season. One second left to go in the third quarter, and the clock will begin now that they move the sticks, and that's going to end the quarter. So the third quarter's over, 35-13. Favor of Westmark College, and Mosdom going to limp toward the sideline to talk to Coach Corver. Football being brought to you by the leader, the Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penny, V&H Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Volmer Shoes, T.J. Antiques, and Susan Mill Standard. Next week is Raiders start the fourth quarter with a football on the Westmart 36-yard line. First and 10. Mosdom stayed in there. Back to pass. Mosdom now going to run it. 35, 30, and taken out of bounds by McLeod. And Hancher was there to make sure he wasn't going to get any further upfield. Turns it into a gain of about four or five. They're going to mark it right on the just inside the 30, so a gain of about six actually. Second down and four. Just uh, about nine seconds into this final quarter of football in Westmar. Just about 14 and a half minutes away from realizing their first win since 1969 in this series. 35-13. They have really done a number on them. Better Raiders had a chance in the third quarter to get back in it, and they fumbled the opportunity away. Straight up the middle they go. This is to Kyle Ochteroff, sophomore out of Edgerton, Minnesota. And he'll carry close to first down yardage. Got about three. Third down at about a yard to go. Going to be a yard short yet of the first down. Arberson out and Kuiper into the huddle. McClinic with two touchdowns today and two touchdown passes. Should be a candidate for District 15 Offensive Player of the Week. Hate to sound greedy, but I guess it's becoming almost a weekly thing to get somebody honored. 
Uh, there's Mostum on the keeper, and Mostum going to carry for the first down to the 24-yard line. Boy, Mostum's becoming kind of a one-man show here. He's throwing and running, and he's taking a heck of a beating as a result. Freshman kid is learning the lessons the hard way. Here is a college QB this afternoon. Actually, the 14 points scored a week ago over at uh, St. Ambrose came from the second unit, guided by Mosdem, and that helped earn him a spot as the QB today. Lynch has not been in the ball game. Westmark coming with a blitz and hit him hard. Freddie Anderson hit him right in the breastbone and took him down at the 30. Anderson shot the gap. Nobody touched him, and he really put a lick on that quarterback. And Mosdem's not going to have to be reminded he was in a football game when he wakes up tomorrow morning. <laughs> he was really given a shot there, but the kid is tough, and he comes right back up off the turf. He's kind of rubbing his upper arms. He really took a lick there. Second down at about 13 to go. Lost the three on the play. The ball back at the 28-yard line. 13-23 left to go in the ball game. Deuce backfield, split receivers to both sides. Mosdom tried the quarterback sneak, but it goes nowhere. He uh, calls the quarterback sneak. Uh, quarterbacks generally have the option of doing that on their own. They apparently think they see something inside, but there certainly wasn't an opening. Westmore must have slanted right into that opening because there uh, was no, nothing up, up the middle in the form of a hole at all, and Mosdom went right down to the line of scrimmage. Now they're looking at third and 13. Mosdom, of course, ran for some good yardage on a sneak earlier. But he hadn't had success any other time today on that sneak. Whoa, somebody jumped the gun. Kuiper and Auberson both took off about a count too early. So this is going to penalize the Red Raiders back another five. And that'll make it a third and about 18 for the Red Raiders with 12 and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. 35-13 Westmar. Mosdem rolling. Rogers in pursuit. He'll take him down from the weak side end. Came all the way across the field, chased him from behind, and finally caught him as Mosdem made a little hesitation move before he started upfield. And that was enough time for Buck Rogers to zero in on him and plant one on that number 11 in the back of the jersey. Looking at fourth down. About 18 to go, but they're going to go for it. They about have to. Walton puts the pressure on. Going on the screen to Herzberg. 30, 25, down to the 23. It won't be enough for the first down. Tackle going to be made by Kratzel and by Westoff. I'll tell you what, Westoff's taken a little bit of a beating today. He was stung in the first half of this ball game, and he hasn't been 100% since then. He kind of gets up slow and trots toward the sideline. Eagles have held him on downs. The defense has done it again. Bend it a little, but not folded, as the saying goes. And Westmar's back out there with their offense. 35-13. Eagles will love to have about a nice seven, eight-minute drive now. And that would eat up a big share of the clock. They just want to work on the clock now. I think they'll be pretty conservative with their football out of the wishbone set. Bowling in motion off to the left. Straight up the middle they go to Pierce and Kelvin. Out across the 25 to about the 26, 27-yard line. That'll be good for about three. 11-24 left to play in the ball game. A 35-13 Westmar lead. Again, the most points they have scored since the 41 points in 65. 64 saw them score 48 points. That was during their 12 straight victories. And those are the two highest scoring offensive outputs for Westmar in the history of the series. Today, the 30th meeting. It looks like the 17-year losing drought is going to be over today, and the 35-game home field winning streak is going to come to an end here today for the Red Raiders. McClinic option to the right. McClinic going to carry behind Pearson. Hills blocking. Got a first down to the 40. 45, 50. He's going to go the route. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. Mark it up. 73 yards. Kelly McClinic with his third touchdown. If there's any doubt, he would be a strong candidate for the district honor. That may have sensed it for him right there. 73 yards for the touchdown. Of course, he had a long run for a touchdown last week or two weeks ago against Concordia in a two-touchdown day, but he's throwing for two today, run for three. That should have put him over the 100-yard marker for rushing today. He's having himself quite an afternoon. 
And he... down by Holmberg. The kick by Moore. He didn't have a lot on it, but it found the mark. He's perfect on the day. Six of six with points after. And it's 42-13. Well, this makes it the second highest offensive production for Westmar in the history of the series. Six shy now. Touchdown short of surpassing that other mark set in 1964. So this Eagle team, 71 points two weeks ago, 42 today. This team's really rolling up some offense. McPartland approaches, kicks off, end over end with a wind in his back and a drive. Huss into the end zone, about eight yards deep, and he'll down it there. Of course, you can't run him out of the end zone anymore in college football anyway, so we're going to come out to the 20, and the Red Raiders are going to be just fighting for their lives now for the rest of the afternoon, just trying to look for some sort of consistency in what is turning into a long afternoon as much as it did a week ago over at St. Ambrose when they were lashed 59-14. to They're taking it 42-13 this afternoon. The hands of the Eagles. Glinch in there now at quarterback for the Red Raiders. Back to pass, takes a look, goes over the middle for Mullenberg. And McLeod going to take him down. Well, you talk about nicknames. McLeod probably has one that's the hardest to figure out. They call him Lyle. He doesn't even know why. <laughs> but Lyle is what the teammates know him as. Checking in there for Westmar. They're going to get some faces in here now that don't play very often. Pat Ostermeyer, freshman out of Akron, going to come in there for McLeod. Over there on that other end spot right now is Ed Snydergaard. Lynch going to roll to the left, takes a look, fires one downfield, intercepted by Hancher at the 43, runs out of bounds. Hancher with his third interception of the year. He had two in the opener against Buena Vista, and he hasn't had one since until now. And that's his third of the year. I don't know one guy that's going to be awful sorry. He missed this one. That's Keith Brown, our sidekick. He'll be back next week, hopefully, calling that home game with Peru State. There's Vernon Bolden off tackle, and Bolden going to carry to the 40-yard line. Got a couple of yards. Looks like Westmar still pretty much got the main offense in there, but defensively they were really running in a lot of fresh horses. Looks like Wolleisen going to limp back from the play to the huddle. I'll tell you, the offensive line is about the only place that has escaped pretty much unscathed this year, the injury bug. Oh, well, he had Polly, I guess, that had an ankle, missed a game early. Craig Larson missed the Concordia game, but... They had enough, uh, I guess, backup people that they didn't really miss a beat with Larson out of there. Back to pass. McClinic wide open is White. 10-5 touchdown. Another one. And I think this. <laughs> Our cameraman lost that one completely. <laughs> yeah, Mark that one up from 40 yards away. Third touchdown pass from McClinic. That one was a message. Take that for all of those big numbers rolled up to the 70s. 75 points back in 1977, I believe. That's the most the Red Raiders have poured on the Eagles. So there's been some uh, 60s and 70s planted on the board in the past, and 48 up there now for Westmar. Maury tries to stay perfect on the afternoon, and he does. 49-13. This is now the highest point production ever by a Westmar team against the Red Raiders. Broke the old record, a setback in 1964. 9-12 to play in a ball game. It's becoming evident now that uh, Westmar is not taking any hostages here this afternoon. They're going for the juggler. Another kickoff to the back of the end zone, and Huss is going to down that one. Red Raiders still are putting the blocks on. The Eagles still charging down. Even though the play was dead, a good uh, five, six seconds. We got a flag down. This is back uh, where Westmar probably crossed the line of scrimmage uh, or on the kickoff a little early. So I guess the Red Raiders are going to make him kick off again. 9-12 left to play in the ball game, and the kickoff again. This one's not going to make it to the end zone. Going to take Huss to the six, though, to the 10, to the 15, 20, 25. 30, Huss going to be down at about the 33-yard line. Tell you what, Frenchy Holmberg, there's a skirmish going on. He's probably not too far away, and he's kind of becoming the marked man of the specialty teams. I see he kind of held the front of the shirt out there for one of the Red Raiders as if to say, we're going to get you 21, and he held the shirt out and said, here I am. <laughs> you don't have to come looking for me. 
9.05 to play in the ball game. Lynch in there at quarterback. And about all fresh faces in her defense. So there's Mullenberg to the 40, 45, 50. Frenchy Holmberg going to take him out of bounds. Well, Hancher, Frenchy Holmberg still in there from the starting unit, and I think that's about it. Everybody else, well, Chad Shook started the ball game. He's still in there, but about everybody else is still new. There's Ostermeyer, Patrick Walton. Uh, number 51 for Westmar is Jim DeBoer, freshman linebacker out of Sioux Center. He's one of the Sioux County defectors. They can't, don't come down to Westmar too often. So he came down from uh, the Sioux Center program to join us at Westmar. We're glad of that. There's the option. Pitch out to Ochterhoff, and Ochterhoff breaks the tackle at the 35, down to the 30, and inside the 30 to the 26. Tackling getting just a little bit sloppy right now. We got a flag back across the field. Paul Safford, I think, is uh, the guilty party here. Randy Schmazel sat uh, Safford down because he had 45 yards worth of penalties in the Concordia game personally, and I think he was a guilty party again, and Randy was a little upset with him, and he's going to get uh, Safford out of the ball game. He told him, I guess, that we want intensity, but it's got to be intensity with an intention. I guess the double I, intensity with an intention, and I think uh, Paul Safford is probably going to be out of the ball game now just on the part of the Westmark coaches for the rest of the afternoon. This 15-yarder is going to Move the ball down First inside down, the 15 to the 13. Kind of stuff you just can't have, and it's going to hurt you in a football game down the road. Sooner or later, it'll catch up to you. 8.52 left to play. 49-13 Westmar. Lynch on the keeper to the 10 to the 5. Lynch is in for the touchdown. 13-yard keeper by the quarterback, Lynch. Helped along by the penalty. And the Red Raider fans, who haven't had a whole lot to cheer about this afternoon, get a chance to applaud their football team as they come off. Again, that was against Westmar's number two defense. Only about two or three starters still on the field. In a hold, they're going to fake it. Brummer faked the kick, and Lynch going to throw it for two toward Herzberg, incomplete. Tipped away there for Westmar by Jeff Schwartz, junior out of uh, Canton, South Dakota, and it's 49-19. got all receivers or defensive backs up there on the front lines. So they're obviously expecting the onsider. Yeah, they kicked it right down the middle of the field. It's going to get right on by Kelvin Pierce. Pierce runs it down to the 10, scoops it up, gets up the field to the 15. There's a flag down again, out over the 25 to about the 30, well, not quite to the 30, 26, 27-yard line. Yeah, the illegal block by Westmar on the kickoff return moves him back to the seven. Looks like the number one def offense is still in there. Kelly McClinic going to carry out across the 10 to about the 11. I think they had a broken play there. 32 left to play in the ball game. 49-19. Going to give to Charles Hill out over the 15 to about the 17-18 yard line. Should be enough for a first down. Stop number 30, Third first down for Westmar this afternoon. Hill getting in outside. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Tried to cut back. Couldn't do it. Run off the field down at the Northwestern 43-yard line. Another big scamper. 10, 20, 30, about 37 yards on that carry. He already had 164 yards at the half, so he'll be closing in on the 200-yard day. And Kelly McClinic's had a big day running for three, throwing for three, and he may be close to 100 yards rushing today. Certainly a strong candidate either way for District 15 Player of the Week honors. Final Coach Mazel worried about the intensity level after the week off. There's Hill going up the middle on the little reverse, and uh, Hill carries to the 30. I don't think there's been anything wrong with the intensity today. They came into this one just about right from an emotional level. And they just played good football from the very beginning today. The only time this game has wavered was early in the third quarter when the Raiders opened the first 30 seconds with a 76-yard screen pass or kind of a swing pass to Mullenberg that got them back in the game. Then they got a fumble out of Westmar and were moving toward the end zone again and then fumbled it away. There's the give to Calvin Pierce. Pierce to the 26. Good for another first down for Westmar. And then there was, in fact, three fumbles in a row in that third quarter, but the Red Raiders and Westmar was able to convert one of those into a touchdown. The momentum swung, and it's been all Westmar since, and they have rolled up a 49-19 lead with 7.09 to go. 
Rob White split wide to the left side, out of the wishbone. Heath Fitzsimmons, the up back, and he's in motion. There's the little give up the middle to Charles Hill and a quick opener. And Hill inside that 15 to about the 13-yard line. And that's good for another first down. 12, 13-yard scamper for, for Hill. And it's going to be first and 10 on the 13. Clinic looking over that Raider defense. First and 10. He's headed to the end zone again. There's Heath Fitzsimmons up the middle. Carries to about the 10-yard line. And the Eagles are looking at second down at about 7. Clock moving down to the 6.15 mark. 49-19. This one really wasn't in doubt since uh, early in the fourth quarter as Westmar has put this thing out of reach and have tacked on a couple of, for a good measure here in this final period. Charles Hill going to check out of the ball game. Gets a nice round of applause. He's had himself quite an afternoon. Looks like... Uh, Coming in to run at that fullback is Tim Bardo, sophomore out of Rippey, Iowa. He'll be playing that left halfback in the wishbone 10. I'm going to give to Calvin Pierce. Pierce going to knife up inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Westmar going to split the backs, go out of a pro set. Look, in their veer. Quick pitch. Pierce to the 10, to the 5, squares his shoulders, gets driven out of bounds at about the 1-yard line. Didn't quite get into the end zone. Pierce has not scored this afternoon, so they're trying to get him a touchdown. And Neil Hall in that tight end side over there helped uh, keep everything jammed inside while they got the pulling linemen out there to help make some good hits downfield. Also got some back end offensive linemen in there now too, but Kelly McClinic staying at a quarterback. Probably this will be his last series of the ball game as we're down to the 5.04 mark. First and goal to go inside the one yard line. Westmar gonna go over the 50 point barrier when they take this one in. Kelly might as well go in and make it four touchdowns. Look for the quarterback sneak, possibly. Nope, they're going to try and get Pierce some points. And Pierce is going to be hitting the backfield for a loss of a yard. Getting in here at wide receiver, and he'll split wide to the left. They're in the wishbone set. McClinic on the keeper, looking for the end zone. Going to be taken down back at the seven or eight yard line. Rick uh, Milma in there to make the tackle. Milma is a freshman out of uh, Sumas, Washington. And Kelly going to be taken down for a loss of about five yards on the play. It's third and goal now from the seven and a half yard line. Goal and McClinic sets him down at a wishbone. Option play, pitch out Pierce to the five. He'll get in for the touchdown. I think we got a flag down though. The referee went rolling clear back out of the end zone. And he's kind of slow getting up. He got taken right out of the play. Got one of the Red Raiders hit pretty hard. Referee got hit pretty hard and he's still down to the back out of the end zone out the touchdown. There was holding on Westmar. The referee's okay. He's got two arms, two legs yet. He's still in one piece. Calvin Pierce on the trap up the middle. He's in anyway. Calvin on a little bit of a trap up the middle. Kind of a draw and Pierce goes in to score his first touchdown of the afternoon. And a 10-yard gallop for Calvin. Gives him six touchdowns for the season. And Westmar goes over the 50-point barrier for the day, 55 to 19. And Maury tries to stay perfect. He was perfect last week in the win over Concordia. And he's got a chance to stay perfect. He's got quite a string of extra points going now as Westmar's had two big offensive explosions in back-to-back -back games. Holmberg placing it down. The kick is up. That's through the middle. 56-19 with 3.36 left to go in the ballgame. Partland kicks it off end over end. It's going to drive Huss back into the back of the end zone again. And he'll down it. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. I said earlier, you can't run him out of the end zone in college football. I think I got my high school rules mixed up with my college rules. You can't actually run him out, but uh, Northwestern chose not to there. Pass by... This was picked off by Safford. Well, they did let Paul Safford back in there, and he picks off his first career interception as an Eagle. Eagles take over at the Red Raider 32. Chad Shook was shook up on the play and uh, injured a leg there, and he was helped off the field. Hope that's not too damaging. He's one of those healthier 
defensive lineman. Chad Samich in a quarterback, so Kelly McClinics run his last series. And uh, up the middle it goes to carrying that last one. Now check it, Eden's supposed to be in uniform. Keith Fitzsimmons carrying a football. I think it was Bardo carrying on the last play, and now Fitzsimmons carries up the middle this time. Instead, we got Steve Utesh in there at offensive guard. He's been playing defense, the old man from Akron. <laughs> in there at offensive guard for the Eagles today. Utesh, as they break huddle, he's asking his, uh, <laughs> what he has to do on the way to the line of scrimmage. Here's Samich on the keeper, and the freshman out of Denison carries to about the 18-yard line. First and 10 for Westmar, and Samich going to get a, nope, fakes it to Bardo. Option play, and Samich going to be pulled down from behind. Tackle going to be made for the Red Raiders by Tim Vandermotten. And a flag down. That was a face mask tacked on to the end of the play. Westmar's got it at the 16, 17. And there's Fitzsimmons. Carries inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. It's going to bring up a second down. And they're going to need about two yet for the first down. 46 seconds to go in the ballgame. 56 to 19, Westmar. There's a give up the middle, Bardo. Bardo's trying to drive to the end zone. Didn't quite get there. Neil Hall said he was there. Steve Utesh signaled he was there, but he didn't quite make it. It's going to be first and goal to go, though. Bardo got him nosed up to the goal line. It's about an inch away. And the Eagle fans wanting those 60 points up there. And they have felt that sting from this Red Raider football team in the past. See, no, quarterback uh, missed the handoff, wanted to go to Fitzsimmons. And Samich had to eat it. And he goes down at about the two-yard line, down to the last 10 seconds. Westmar, I don't think, would stop the clock. But <laughs> Craig Larson's in there at center right now. He, of course, been the starting center up till today, or up until last week. And they aren't going to get it off. Westmar ends the game inside the two-yard line, 56 to 19 the final. Kelly McClinic with a big day after... A rough afternoon last year in a 6-0 loss. He comes back with three touchdown runs, three touchdown passes. Sure, he had over 100 yards rushing. And, of course, uh, Charles Hill with over 200 yards rushing. It may get him the NEI rushing lead back nationally. So quite a day, quite an afternoon for the Eagle football team. And I think this should, uh, I guess, send the message out that uh, the Eagles are back to where they wanted to be after being uh, set back in two ball games since late September by Dana and then by Doan and now I think they're back on track again and they have really showed that they are a strong offensive football team over the last two outings 71 points against Concordia 56 here this afternoon against uh, a Red Raider team that obviously is reeling a little bit and not quite the Red Raider teams of uh, some of the past 70s ball clubs but it's uh, still a mighty proud program and Westmar has been waiting 17 long years to deal out this punishing blow they have ended the longest losing streak on the Westmar schedule as far as series go and Westmar wins for the 13th time for the first time since 1969. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be at home next week. Peru State in town and uh, get out and root for those Eagles because they've got a couple of rated opponents now. Huron in two weeks up at Huron and then of course uh, got a couple of games in November. Dakota State at home and then Dakota Wesleyan over in the Dakota Dome on a Thursday night to wrap up the season. Red Raiders home next week. Parents Day hosting Chadron State. 56 to 19 the final. Westmar wins it. Leads from the very beginning to the very end. And uh, again, Kelly McClinic leads the way with his uh, three touchdown runs and three touchdown passes. Till next week. So